Hey, Dr. C here with you. So your adrenal function is critical for so many parts of your health. And the cool thing is it can do better. And there are some safe ways that supplementation can make a big difference with that. In this video, I'll talk about how supplements can help, how they can help really reverse abnormal adrenal function. So for starters, I wanna talk about the idea of an adaptogen and about the relevance of cortisol regulation. So what happens is that many people have an abnormal cortisol slope. They should have a high level of morning cortisol and a low level of nighttime cortisol, but it can be off. And it can be off in a lot of different ways. It can be too high across the board, it can be backward, or it can always be low. And in all these cases, that correlates with a big range of symptoms and a big range of health risks. So the trick is, how do you get that right again? And what is the strategy behind that? And the old thinking was that you had to push cortisol up or push it down or manipulate it in some way. What we've come to learn is that the body's doing it largely on purpose. So it's more a matter of helping the body heal itself so the body can better regulate cortisol. And the neat thing is there's plants that work as what are called adaptogens. These simply help the body adapt. Our bodies at any given moment are doing tens of thousands of things to maintain our chemical balance. We call this homeostasis, we call this resilience. And the more we can do that effectively, the better our cortisol slope can be, the better our health can be, and the better our overall symptomology can be. And it turns out that there are plants that give us more adaptability, that help us work better and more effectively. Now, I have a new blend that's made, and it's made to work very simply. So regardless of whether your cortisol is you know, always high, always low, or backward, or whatever, the blend is completely based upon plants that work in all those circumstances. It almost sounds like magic, but not quite. So one example is in Ayurvedic medicine, they understood that plant medicines could be stimulating or sedating or balancing. They called that uh, rajasic, tamasic, or sattvic. And the sattvic remedies were ones that would raise what was low and lower what was high. They could help the body do either. We now have strong science showing that that's real, that plant medicines can work in those ways. They can be sattvic. They can work to simply raise homeostasis. And given that, it's not critical which direction you're moving from. <laughs> you know that if your body gets more resilient and more adaptable, then it'll fix things. And that's great because there's so many things that require regulation, we can't be aware of all of those. But the better our bodies can self-regulate, the more many things can take care of themselves. And I wanna kind of spotlight a few of these key plants and talk a bit about how they work. The first one I wanna mention is cordyceps. Now this one's kind of unusual. It's actually a fungus, and it's a fungus that it's related to dietary mushrooms, not the same. It grows in the cocoon of the silkworm moth. And it's been studied for a long time, and recent high quality evidence has shown that it's useful. It can lower inflammation. It can help the body make its own antioxidants. It can raise glycogen stores, and it can also help the immune system be better regulated. You know, in one sample study, a group of people that were adults aged 50 to 75 they use either cordyceps or placebo for 12 weeks. And what happened was their exercise performance increased by over 10%. And that was only in those taking the cordyceps. So in a short period of time, their bodies were able to generate greater amounts of energy. And that's showing how they were adapting more effectively. And the stressor of exercise rebounded into greater returns in fitness than they had otherwise. Another one to mention is Panax, Panax ginseng. There's many types of ginsengs, this is one of them, and this has been thought of as a tonic for quite some time. We now know that Panax can actually lower oxidative stress and improve the mitochondrial function in skeletal muscle tissue. A recent analysis looked at over, over 140 human studies, and what they concluded was that ginseng can help fatigue, that double blind placebo studies showed that it works better than placebo, and that even in the first 15 days, results can be quite pronounced and quite dramatic. So we think a lot about fatigue as one of the hallmark symptoms of adrenal distress, and Panax can be useful for that. 
Another one that I've included is theanine. This is pretty cool. This is a non-essential amino acid. We find this in many foods, but tea and green tea are among the higher sources of that. Theanine improves cognitive function specifically, and it does that without having stimulant effects. It increases alpha waves in the brain, and it has neuroprotective effects against the chronic stress response. In one study, 30 adults took that compared to a placebo group, and what they saw was that many tests had improvements on mood, cognitive performance, and sleep quality, and they also saw decreases in depression and anxiety. Interestingly enough, verbal fluency increased, so their ability to recall words, to select words, they all got better due to theanine. Uh, astragalus is another one that I've chosen. This is really underutilized, I think. This is also called milk vetch. This is a common ingredient in soups from traditional Chinese medicine. Astragalus is a very food-like herb. It's pretty safe for pretty much all people over a wide range of conditions. And specifically, its role here is that it can benefit mental function, energy output, and quality of life symptoms. It's been shown to really reverse fatigue and help create a greater amount of resiliency and specifically help cognitive function and social function. So when you're run down and stressed and frazzled, it's probably better to be around people, but it's often stressful to be around people. And astragalus specifically changes that and helps us adapt better to social environments. Now, the last one I'm gonna mention is one that you may not have heard of, it's L-citrulline, also called citrulline malate. This is an amino acid and it helps uh, exercise capacity. Specifically, it acts upon nitric oxide pathways. And these are critical for helping us benefit from exercise. And that's the thing, under a chronic stress response, exercise is a double-edged sword. You know, it's often helpful, but too much can be just traumatic and too much can set the body back and worsen the overall stress load. But citrulline has been clearly shown to help strength increases and help recovery become quicker and without, without the typical side effects. So this blend I've called adrenal energy. And what's different about it is that all of these ingredients are ones that are fine regardless of where one's adrenal level resides. Whether you've got too much cortisol, too little, or it's backward, these are all things that can help with that. So if you have a lot of these key symptoms of fatigue, heightened stress, anxiety, poor sleep, energy crashes at certain times of day, that can correlate with adrenal health and the adrenal energy can be a benefit for that. Now, if you're advanced and you've done tests before and you know which of those levels you're in, you can still use it in a more targeted way. So those with a healthy current cortisol rhythm that wish to keep it that way can use one daily in the morning for preventive purposes. Those who have high cortisol throughout the day, this more stressed response, the doses change to two capsules in the morning. And those who have that wired or tired, where they're backward, they're low cortisol morning, higher later in the day, the dose there is one twice daily. And finally, those at crashed or that later stage where cortisol is always low, the dosing then is two twice daily. But this is adrenal energy, and this is, this is representative of how much nature can help us and how much benefit there can be found from whole foods, from carefully sourced plant-based medicines, and how resilient the body really is, and how great its capacity is to heal. So yeah, regardless of how bad these symptoms have been, or how long your adrenals have been distressed, please know that they can get better. You know, don't give up hope. And along with diet lifestyle changes, consider adrenal energy as a big part of the recovery. You should expect to see positive symptom changes in no more than a few weeks when you're doing things right. All right, Dr. C with you. Take great care. I'll see you again real soon.